point. Lord be with you. Oh, come on. It's Thanksgiving week. You haven't eaten yet. You're not tired. Let's try that again. Good morning, Center Point. Good morning. Okay. All right. That's better. That's better. I'm glad you're here with us that you chose Center Point as your time this week to worship God and to hear God speak to you. And on this, uh, this week before Thanksgiving, we are truly celebrating thanks um, for, to God, first and foremost, for all that he's done in our life and is still promising to do for us. Um, that's what we're here to do today. I want to turn your attention to just a few announcements that we have in your in your bulletin. You can read over most of the opportunity, all the opportunities that we have. Um, also, invite you to look online at our website. Um, the opportunities are all posted there as well. Uh, you should have received an insert about poinsettias that will be um, will put on a stage uh, during Christmas, during Advent and Christmas time. Um, take a look at those. I think they need to be turned back in by December twelfth. I think that's right. Uh, that's what I'm reading here. Um, Yes, December 12th. Uh, so we got a little bit of time for that. Um, I want to invite uh, Gray to come forward and talk about, if he's here, there he is, to talk about New Consecration Sunday coming up in just a few weeks. I'll show you the poster about that. It's coming December the 9th. And what it is, is that's going to be our Consecration Sunday. And to celebrate, to celebrate that, we're planning on having a catered luncheon after the 11 o'clock service. So we hope y'all will return for the luncheon as well. Since it's catered, we're gonna have a reservation uh, request. You know, I'm coming, I'm not coming, how many is coming, so we can kind of help the caterer out with the, the number of meals we're gonna serve, and we'll start that process next week. Now our stewardship program this year is not focused on fundraising. Instead, it's focused on our individual, personal relationship with God. As we prepare for our annual Stewardship Sunday, I ask each of you to pray individually to God for guidance and answer the question of what percentage of my income is God calling me to give? The decision concerning the amount an individual gives should be based on that relationship with God. If it's going, merely going to the church or to a charity or another ministry, it's only charity. But if it's given to God, it's an act of worship. So our attitude when we give is a lot more important than the amount that we give. The Bible clearly states that God is the sole owner of everything. So with that said, what percentage of income is God calling you to give? Thank you. Sunday, December the 9th. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Gray. Uh, we also have a Married People event coming up. Uh, do we have that video ready to run this morning? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay. We're just going to, I'm going to let you know about the married people event coming on if you had if you came to the last one that we had it was a blast we had a great time this is another large group event you didn't have to come to the first one to be able to come to this one um, and there's child care provided which is a great thing as well so mark that on your calendars please plan to attend it's a potluck dinner we do have it okay
and I hope you put that on your calendar and you plan to attend. Yes, Mr. Davis. I might need that again. Thanks for those who helped. Thanks for those who helped. My best estimate is about $13,500. That does not include the orange envelopes that I'm sure everybody mailed in. Uh, I have not, we've not counted any of that money, but I, I feel like that, that is a, a good estimate of what we made. And we thank you all for coming and eating and sharing. And somebody here won something, if I'm not mistaken. She don't even know she won. What's your name over there, Kathy. the lady in the very back <laughs> row? Do, do, <laughs> did, did you know that you want a television? Okay. It's, it's over here in the it's room. It's in that room. It's in that room. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, last but certainly not least, if you're a visitor with us this morning, we're glad that you're here, um, that you chose this place and this time to worship with us at First Church. Um, if you will, please, if you are a visitor, there's a green card in the seat in front of you. If you'll take some time to fill that out and place that in the offering plate um, after our time of praise this morning, uh, we'd greatly appreciate that. We're already getting several folks that are, that are interested and, and eager to join us at First United Methodist Church through these cards. Um, so we're just we're thrilled that, that God's doing wonderful things amongst us here at First Church. And we just want to thank him for that. Uh, let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this place in which we are free and so abundantly given your grace um, that we are free to come to this place and to worship you. We ask that your spirit fall fresh upon us this day, that we may hear with joy uh, what it is you need us to know as we go from this centering place out into the world to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray, be with us. Amen. Let's stand together and uh, let's join our hearts and our song and our mouths together in praise. Oh, you know. 
nations worship at his throne and glorify the wonder of Christ and Christ alone. Come on, come on to the presence of our God. This is where our hope and Come taste and see We've been summoned by the King In a realm and place your feet on holy ground We yeah. will shine really familiar to most of you in here so sing out and let's tell God just how great he is Spirit and Son, the Lion and the Lamb. 
Jesus, thank you so much for joining with us here in this service. 
and in the service prior to, and we know you're going to be present in the service at 11, and the church is all over this town and this state and this country, Lord, and worldwide, and, and we just thank you for that. I love what we see when we sing that song, the imagery of the sun not even comparing to the light that you bring and how it's so bright that there aren't any, any even shadows where you are. And Lord, we just thank you for joining with us today. And we just thank you so much for all that you've blessed us with. We're coming up in a week where we celebrate Thanksgiving. And Lord, just keep our hearts focused on you and, and be with those that may not be having dinner with their families on Thursday or um, who just don't even know where they're going to get their meal from. Lord, just be with those people and help us to help those that are in need. And Lord, um, we're about to take up a monetary offering. And, and as we give back to you what you have given to us, Lord, bless it and use it for your glory and your kingdom. It's in all these things we pray. Amen. For the offering this morning, um, with Thanksgiving coming up, um, I can't help but think of a little chorus that we always sang at my church, my little country church in Belhaven growing up. Um, and I was talking to Neva as we were getting ready for it, and I've got two little boys, and I try to teach and instill in them gratefulness, and it's kind of hard to do in a world where there's so much stuff and there's a sense of entitlement, I think, amongst us a lot of times. And um, this is a song that, like I said, I sang growing up, and I have found myself teaching, you know, my kids. And I sing it with Sam before bed, trying to hopefully he'll hear this song um, and realize that the simple things in life that we have to be thankful for. Um, and, you know, we, we serve such a gracious God, and it's just incredible to to be able to share him with others. So I'm going to sing this old country, bluegrass, southern gospel chorus for you. And I hope maybe this week that it'll be replayed in your head too. It's very simple. If you know it, feel free to sing along. There's a roof up above me, I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table, and there's shoes on my feet. And you gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me. I have a good place to sleep. There's food on my table, and there's shoes on my feet. And you gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. All of God's people said, amen. amen. Nicole, that brought back memories. I'm an old Pentecostal hillbilly, so I, I have heard that tune before. Pleasant, precious memories. Very grateful for those. It's good to see you, Center Point. Well, it is good to be seen. Our text for this day comes to us from the Psalms. We're going to look at the 92nd chapter, the 92nd Psalm, and we're going to look at one verse. But boy, what a verse. If you've got your Bible with you, which is always a good thing to do, bring it to church. I invite you to turn there, or you may look at the screen. 
Psalm 92, verse 1. As a matter of fact, why don't you read it with me? Let's read it together. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to thy name, O Most High. That's the word of God for the people of God in the house of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time together. Thank you for the many blessings that you've showered upon us, Lord. We're more blessed than we realize, more blessed than we deserve. But by your grace, we claim those blessings in the name of Jesus. And so we pray, Lord, this day as we gather together that you'll open our hearts and our minds to receive your good news for us this day. In your name we pray. Amen. The story is told of a fella who worked in a railroad depot. Every time a train came in, he would come out of the depot station with a sledgehammer. And he proceeded to hit every wheel on the locomotive with that sledgehammer. Now, he did that for every train that came into the depot, rain or shine, for 30 years. At the end of 30 years, they, he retired. They had a big celebration. They gave him a gold watch for his years of faithful service. And a, a news crew from a local town came over to do a human interest story on him. The television reporter was interviewing this fellow, and they said, we understand you've worked here for 30 years. That's right. And every time a train came into the depot, you would come out with a sledgehammer, and you'd hit the wheels on that locomotive, uh, the, the, the engine, every time a train, is that right? Yes, sir, that's right. Well, tell me, sir, why in the world did you do that? The old fellow thought about it for a second. He said, you know what? I don't rightly know. When they hired me, they didn't tell me why I was supposed to do it. They just told me to do it. Now, let me ask you something. You ever wonder why you do some of the things you do? Why do I do some of the things I do? I mean, after all, if you were working at a railroad depot and your job for 30 years was to take a sledgehammer and hit the wheels on, a, on an engine, wouldn't you try to find out why? I think I would. Some people will say, well, it's tradition. And understand, tradition are, traditions are good and honorable things. And a lot of them have wonderful, meaningful beginnings. But if we're not sharing those, if we're not teaching those to the next generation, how long is it going to be before all that's forgotten? And then all of a sudden, all we're doing is just going through the motions. I think a lot of times about things like Thanksgiving Day being things just like that. I mean, most of us in here know the story of the first Thanksgiving in America, and we know it's a day for family and football and food, food, food. But why should we take one day out of the year and give thanks? I mean, why should we do that? As Christians, we're called to live continual lives of thanksgiving. And we know all the right words and we know all the right actions. But there are times when we lose sight of the reason for our words of thanksgiving and for our acts of thanksgiving. And pretty soon, if you're not careful, it just becomes another going through the motion. We don't need to be going through the motion when we're thanking God. So I want us just to reflect for a few moments this morning on that text we read together because I think it's a wonderful thing to bring us back to what it's all about, to help us understand why we should give thanks. You heard the psalmist. In another version of the scriptures, uh, it says simply, we used to sing a song like this, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and so, to sing praises to his name, O Most High. Anybody ever sing that song? I sung that a lot growing up. There are wonderful, meaningful, transformational reasons why you and I ought to be giving thanks. And somebody said, what are they, Ken? Thank you for asking. You and I need to engage in thankful lives because it reminds us of who we really are and that we are people who are people in need. And I think that may be one of the reasons why people don't like to engage in thankful lives. 
Because in our culture, somebody being a person in need somehow makes them weaker or somehow less of a person. Being in need is a position in which most of us would like to either forget about or to avoid altogether. Some years ago, Richard Hagberg did an article in Forbes magazine. He was talking to a corporation head, and that corporation head told him a story of a time when he and his wife were standing in line at the Department of Motor Vehicles to get his license renewed. Well, as you know, those lines at the DMV can be interminable, and this was the case that particular day as well. And the company head did his best. He was hanging in there. He was hanging on. But finally, he blew his stack. And he turned to his wife and said, don't these people know who I am? And she looked him dead in the eye and said, yeah, you're a plumber, son, that got lucky. <laughs> that sweet lady that stood at the altar and said, I do, set him straight. In Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, verses 7 to 18, we find Moses doing sort of the same thing for the children of Israel. He's reminding them they're called to be thankful people. And one of the best ways he does that is remind them of their story, of where they've come from. At one point in their story, they were slaves. They were literally non-people. They didn't count. They had no home and no hope and no life beyond the brick pits of Egypt. But then God moved in a mighty way. And he made them not just some people, but he made them his people. And he gave them a hope for the future by leading them to freedom. And he gave them a home that was to be theirs for eternity. It's not too long after all that's happened, just a couple generations, and these folks have already forgotten that. And they're a grumbling, resentful, thankless people. So it takes Moses to come along and in effect say to them, hey, y'all, you're not all that in a bag of chips. You were nobodies who are now somebodies by the grace of God. And so you ought to be thankful for that every single day of your life. I get mad when I read the stories of the children of Israel. You know, they're ungrateful. They're griping all the time. It's what in the world. And then I realize it's a mirror. And I see us in that mirror. There are times when we forget, you know what, at one time we were nobodies. We were folks with no heavenly home and no hope and no future beyond the pits of sin and despair. But then God in Christ Jesus acted in a powerful way and lifted us out of the miry clay. Claimed us as his own. Made us joint heirs with Christ in the eternal kingdom and promised us life abundant and eternal. And one of the most important reasons you and I ought to be thankful is to be reminded of the fact, you know what? We have been people in need. We're still people in need. And therefore, we need to remember that and to be thankful for God's blessings. We've got to be thankful people also because it reminds us of who's responsible for our blessings. Really thankful people, people who are really thankful as God would have us to be thankful, understand that all they have and all they'll ever have, all they are and all they'll ever be is a gift of grace from God. And yet we live in the midst of a world that tries to convince us that we are the masters of our fate, we are the captains of our soul, we are the sole reason we have anything. Anybody in here want to admit they watched The Simpsons? I will. In one of the Thanksgiving episodes very early on, the family's gathered around the Thanksgiving table. Homer, the father, asks Bart, the son, to say the blessing. Bart bows his head for a few moments, and then he says, Dear God, my mom worked to cook the food, my dad worked to make the money and bought the food. What did you do? Now, I know that shocks the sensibilities of some people, some that watched it, some who hear that story. But you know what? If we're telling truth in the church, which is what you ought to do, there are a lot of people this morning who are in churches who live their lives that exact way. And if we're not careful, that same attitude can seep into our lives. And when it does, 
It makes us believe the lie that we're responsible for every good thing that comes our way. And when you've got that kind of attitude, you really can't have an open heart and an open life to receive God's benefits. Most of all, the benefit of salvation by faith through grace in Jesus. You don't think you need him. I've got everything. I'll get it if I need it. You can't get that unless you ask for it. So being thankful reminds us, don't believe the hype. God is responsible for all the good things in your life. And we need to understand that and give due honor and glory where it's due. Being thankful also helps to remind us that thankfulness as a discipline is to be active in nature. You know, it's really good for us. It's good for us to be thankful people because it reminds us that we are people who need things. We are dependent folks. It helps us to understand that we are dependent on the goodness of God. He's the one that gives us all the good stuff. But thankfulness, just to remind us of those things, is a hollow and limited practice unless we truly understand that it's supposed to be active in nature. You see, Thanksgiving, as God would have you and I to practice it, is an active discipline. It means that we're going to reach out beyond ourselves because we know we're people in need and have been blessed, and we know that God has blessed us. And that compels us to reach out beyond ourselves to those around us and to share God's goodness with the hope that it will lead others to come to know God in a saving way. And that flies in the face of our culture. Again, I think that's another reason a lot of folks don't want to deal with thankfulness except to give it lip service. You see, we live in a culture that teaches us a sort of a social Darwinian principle that says, if I've got what I need and a little bit more and you don't have anything, well, that's just the way it's going to be because the strong will survive. I got mine. Let me, or let them get theirs. That flies in the face of what God and Christ would teach us. That the height of blessedness, the depth of thanksgiving is seen when we reach out with a spirit of love to the people around us to love them into the kingdom, to share with them. Amazing things happen when you embody that. Back in September 2013, Evan Gastaldo wrote a story for the Detroit Free Press about a very unusual wedding reception. Uh, Carol and Willie Fowler, who live in Atlanta, Georgia, they had paid for 200 of the guests at their daughter's wedding to have a nice meal at the Villa Christina restaurant in Atlanta, in the Atlanta area. Uh, Forty days before the wedding took place, she called it off. So here they are, stuck with 200 meals, not really knowing what to do. Carol said, Willie and I prayed about it. We decided we'd sleep on it, try to figure out what to do. The next morning, she said, Willie got up and looked at me and said, I'm going to call Hosea Feeds the Hungry, which is a a service that, that helps the homeless in the Atlanta metro area, and see if they could use this. So he called up the, uh, the service there, Hosea Feeds the Hungry, and at first they thought it was a practical joke. But he finally convinced them. So on September 15th, 200 of the homeless in Atlanta gathered at what was renamed the Foster Family Celebration of Love. Romans 8.28 tells us this. It says, we know that in all things, God works together for good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Did you ever think you would celebrate a called off wedding? But what a way to celebrate, right? You see, when your heart's right, when you understand, you know what? I'm a person in need, and I'm blessed by God. It's not me, it's him. When you understand that, it frees you up to let that blessing flow through you into the lives of the people around you. And that's what we're called to do. For a lot of people, one of the popular parts of the Thanksgiving Day celebration is the Black Friday shopping that's actually beginning to take place earlier and earlier on Thanksgiving Thursday. Matthew Shea, the head of the National uh, Federation of Retailers, said this. He said, Thanksgiving shopping 
It's become an extension of the day. Whole families do it. Another retailer was asked about it, and he said, we hope people will keep doing it because it will spur impulse buying. And that's great news, isn't it? Because what the world needs is another huggy, or another, yeah, another snuggy, and another uh, Furby, right? We all need that. Little Tickle Me Elmo. Folks, in the midst of a cultural onslaught that keeps telling us the lies that we deserve everything we get and we ought to get everything we want. I want us to remember this. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to thy name, O Most High. Because that reminds us, you know what? We're not all that in a bag of chips. We're a bunch of sinners that got really lucky and blessed. We were saved by a mighty hand of grace, and we owe it all to God. And the best way for us to show our gratitude is to share that blessing with the people around us. God, give every one of us the grace this day as we sit at that table Thursday to resolve from that point on that we are going to live lives of real thankfulness to show this world around us why we should give thanks. Thanks be to God for his good news to us this day. Amen. Hey everyone, stand with us as we sing this closing song together.
thankful for this time we've had together, thankful for the love that is here, thankful for the grace we've all received from God in Christ Jesus, and thankful for the opportunity to go out into the world and share it with those who don't know about it. God bless you. I love you. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Until we are together again, receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.